packs of insects. As you can see, they're pushed down against a soft cotton material. They're not pinned like these insects are pinned. You can see the pin standing out here to hold the wing in place. It's not pinned th through the insect body. Here it is. So this is my first Rikert box. Um, wanted to talk about some lessons that I learned. Once you position an insect, you don't want to move it. Um, what happens as in this case, some things we can't control, like the squishing here, there might be some breakage. Um, these two ended up touching, but that's actually pretty cool because now you can see the underside of this robber fly. That's a hover fly. So I won't even open it to move them because I'm concerned of more breakage of the legs of the insects that came off. Here is, I moved this moth and all his legs came off, which is fine, but it's nicer to have, I think, a clean display. Um, this is a red admiral butterfly and his antenna came off at one point. Um, you know, I do the insects and I show them to neighbors and my kids and I just like collecting them. So little details of legs and things like that I'm not too concerned of because usually when somebody looks at an insect box like this, they're um, not as familiar with the species. So they're just in awe that, oh, these are all different kinds of beetles, right? Including here, these are all, this is a longhorn beetle, that's a lightning bug, that's a box elder, that's a milkweed uh, beetle, red june bug, one more here, another species, that's a large green uh, beetle, june bug. Um, these are smaller, these are ladybugs, uh, that is my favorite, uh, Manny the praying mantis. These are uh, petrified frogs that we uh, we're on a trip with a friend and uh, he found them and knew I would find these, something to do with them. Uh, this is a caddy did. This is a grasshopper from Wisconsin. This is a leaf hopper. This is a, oh, I'm not going to pronounce it correctly, Virginia stunia moth, male, dragonfly, damselfly. Mud Dopper Wasp, Cicada Killer Wasp. This I thought was an Ichneumon Wasp because of the curve, but it didn't have the long extension, so I'm not sure about this one. Um, the antenna got twisted there too. This is a type of bee, Honey Bee, Black and White Wasp, also called a Bald Face Hornet iridescent wasp, um, another thin-waisted wasp. Sometimes people think this is a yellow jacket. This is actually a paper nest wasp, the one that makes these long tubes. That's a paper nest wasp. And this I keep because people always think it's a wasp or a bee, and it's not. It's a mimic. It is a um, mimic fly to look like a wasp, that is its defense. And then this is my other favorite insect, a robber fly. He's upside down there. Um, he has a long probiosis that comes out right there. You could see it a little bit, that little middle. And you know what? This could be a type of robber fly because he has a probiosis that's probably not antenna. That's probably a probiosis. I'm gonna look him up later. So anyway, the robber fly, um, takes its probiosis out and injects it into the insect that it found and sucks out its insides using the probiosis like a straw. Very cool way to die. That's a robber fly. And then this is a regular house fly. Um, this is a jumping spider. They're all over Chicago. So you can spot it by this white marking on the back. It's also furry and fuzzy. This is an orb weaver that we actually just found a couple nights ago. Fairly large for this time of year. And I'm worried about how this is going to be a 
fraction of what we caught because all of what we caught because all the kids, there were six, six, seven, eight kids in total, we all did our own boxes. This is a tiger moth. Um, this is a yellow collared skate moth. It looks similar to a vine borer, but it is not. These are little leaf hoppers, and you can tell because of this triangular um, pattern that they have on their bodies. There they are. That's another, um, I think that is a similar insect because of this body shape. Right here, that abdomen sticking out. Looks very similar to this guy. So I'm going to take those up. These are three types of moths. Mantis, and they were flying on the farm, so we can get and put some of these up. We should take this out now because the ones are going to stay, they no longer need to be secure. Type of butterfly, grasshopper, cricket, grasshopper, box elder, western conifer seed bug, shield bug because it looks like it has a shield. This is a shield bug. This is a shield bug. This is a tussock moth, currently in the caterpillar phase. A type of wasp. This is a paper nest wasp. That is the actual nest. And in here, behind here, in theory, would be the little larva eggs in there. Another thin waisted wasp because it's got a thin waist. I don't know exactly what species. We have a golden rod soldier beetle. One, two, three, and I like to pin them upside down sometimes because you get the perspective of the, what it looks like from its underside. These are all different types of ladybugs, and you can see there's a 12 spotted ladybug. Um, this could be a Mexican ladybug because she's solid, but I'd have to look at them in more detail to be sure. Three different types of spiders. I do not know which species they are. Um, this one, see it was really tiny, really tiny, really tiny. There they are. You can see it a little bit. Very cool. So that's a nice little series from Southern Illinois. And then we were recently in Green Lake, Wisconsin. Instead of making the tabs, the insect tabs on the triangle, for these really, really small ones, we put them directly on the paper. And again, nail polish, clear nail polish, is the glue that's used. And this way you can really see their detail. 
Obviously, they're permanently attached. I'm trying to remove them would probably just destroy the insect. A um, couple of different types of spiders. I'm not an expert in spiders. I only know my eaters and drinkers of the spiders for the Midwest. Thumbs up, emoji face, hugs.